friends, my name is Victoria and welcome back to another video where we ask the age-old question, do I ever shut up? I was talking to my friends about TV the other day, as one would do, and I remembered this obscure little show that I used to be very, very into. And when I mentioned it to them, they had no clue what I was talking about. And I was kind of surprised, but I was also very excited because I would love to get into this today. I want to talk about the short-lived Hanna-Barbera series Laugh Olympics. It ran from 1977 to 1978, which was a few years before I was born, but I was introduced to it as a kiddo and I really, really loved it, so I thought it'd be fun to revisit it today. If you're unfamiliar, which would not surprise me, the series was essentially an Olympic-style competition show starring the biggest Hanna-Barbera characters from the time, like Scooby-Doo and Yogi Bear. And if I'm correct, it was actually the only time that characters from the four biggest of their franchises interacted on screen. So that's kind of fun. I think the best thing to compare it to for people in my age group would be the Disney Channel games because it was the same format and was intended to generate the same amount of hype. You know, it was cool to see all of these typically unconnected TV stars interacting and then get to root for your favorites. I'm assuming. I wasn't alive. Although I'm making this video because I'm fairly obsessed with the show, it is also admittedly not the best. I was going through IMDb the other day and looking through reviews and a very kind man named Richard.Fuller1 said, it isn't a good cartoon. I wanted to regard it as fun, but in truth, it wasn't. It was incredibly stale and the animation isn't impressive either. But before you turn off this video, I want you to ask yourself if I've ever had bad taste in television. And then I want you to not answer that question. But let's continue. The competition took place all around the world, which made for some really exciting adventures and consisted of three teams. The Yogi Ahuis were the more 50s, 60s era characters, the Scooby Doobies were more so 70s, and then the last team was called the Really Rottens. It, of course, would not be the Olympics if one of them wasn't involved in a cheating scandal, so can you guess which of the three teams I just listed had the bad guys? Yeah, the Really Rottens were a team of original villain characters who sabotaged nearly every contest because the show was formulaic and predictable. Now this is something that still very much confuses me, because in this world, if they name themselves the Really Rottens, then that should have been an immediate red flag to everyone else, but then if the heads of the event named them that, then that's really mean, and that would probably explain why they were so mean to everybody else, because that's not a nice name but it doesn't matter, whatever. Anyways, the hosts of the event seem to be very aware of what the really Rottens have got going on, which makes sense because they do some blatantly stupid things. To give one of many examples, in a batting competition, when they are the pitchers, they send out like 50 balls at once at top speed, and you know, that's not how baseball works. A wind up, the pitch! It's a fly ball! It's a grounder! It's a line drive! So here's how the formula goes. The announcers will make some comment acknowledging that they probably shouldn't be doing that, but then they'll let them do it so there's some suspense in the show and they'll wait until it's over to penalize them. And this will make sense like the first three times you watch it, and then you'll start to wonder why they don't just kick the guys out if they're evidently incapable of following the rules. So my theory is that they either couldn't find anyone else to participate or they really liked seeing everyone else suffer. And I think those are both I think those are both valid excuses, but regardless of the reasoning, they put up with them for 24 episodes. While these little plot points are indeed questionable, I think the show is so rad because it has a legitimate charm to it. Hanna-Barbera cartoons are the hecking cutest, and the variety in the games and locations makes it really fun to watch. And even though you know how every single competition is going to end 100% of the time, it is cool to see how they play out, because you get an understanding of every character's strengths and weaknesses, and although limitations are rare in the cartoon world, they do exist, and so it's fun. I honestly feel like I have the same amount of intrigue and entertainment as when I'm watching the actual Olympics, although there are probably, there are probably other factors that contribute to that. And in addition to the competition factor, I think the show is legitimately funny. I mean, it's like kids funny, it's the type of visual, illogical gag humor that comes with any cartoon, but it is enjoyable. For example, there's this scene in one of the races where the really Roddens pour this mix into their drink that lets out a bunch of smog, and when the interviewers try to talk to the Blue Falcon, he just can't get a word in, and I thought it was so funny. And I also think everything is funny, so I don't know if you'll like it as much as I did, but I'll let you watch it. And the motor scooter race, fellas. 
Well, I believe, well, I believe that, uh, and furthermore, as opposed to... Another fun aspect of the show are these little interviews that they will do with characters that aren't competing. So for example, my pal Fred Flintstone is not any of the teams, but he is a Hanna-Barbera character, so they put him to use in these things. There's this super fun one with him where he is on the edge of a yacht and the interviewer pressures him into getting into a little boat at the bottom of the yacht. And so he climbs down a ladder to get into the little boat, but he messes up and he falls into the water and they don't specify what happens to him, but it is safe to assume that he dies. So that's cool. Balance. One must have perfect... Yeah! I guess the only thing left to ask now is what happened to the Laugh Olympics, and my answer to that question is that I don't know. I did some digging and I couldn't really find anything. The first season had 16 episodes, while the second only had 8 that they mixed in with reruns from the first, so I guess that shows that they were nearing the end from the beginning. Warner Brothers actually still owns the series right now, which means that they could totally bring it back with modern Cartoon Network icons, but I think that is unlikely and I don't think this YouTube video from a teenage girl could do much about it. In conclusion, I like this show. I made this video because I like this show. I pointed out issues with it because they're there, but I think it's a fun thing. And I realized that people in my age group might not be familiar with it. Oh. I realized that people in my age group might not be familiar oh my god. I realized that people in my age group might not be familiar with it if they weren't boomerang stands in their youth, and so I thought it'd be fun to bring it up today. If you hadn't heard of it before this video and you would like to see more, I found a ton of clips online, but I also think you could pay a buck or two on iTunes or YouTube for full episodes, so that is also an option. At the time I'm filming this, I don't know how long it's gonna be after I edit it, so if it was a little bit shorter or a little bit longer, I apologize and I hope you enjoyed it regardless. As a reminder, if it was not already incredibly obvious, I'm not good at YouTube and I'm not trying to make it a thing, but I like talking about stuff, so you can always like or subscribe if you had a good time, and feel free to comment telling me anything you'd like to see change, because I'm sure there's a lot. I'm sure there's a lot you'd like to see change. But thank you for watching and I will be seeing you. Bye! George Not Found went live. Oh, I gotta finish this video. Okay.